Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. What you see before you, of course, are beautiful, yummy apples. Apples like these started out as flowers. See, a fruit is what remains of a flower after all the accessory parts of a flower, such as petals, filaments, stamens, etc., have fallen off. As you can see in this beautiful illustration, after all the eggs have been fertilized in the ovary, the accessory parts of a flower, such as petals, filaments, stamens, etc., they fall off. And then the ovary grows and matures into the fruit. In this case, a yummy apple. This is the process that we shall try to understand today. Recall that a flower basically is the reproductive organ of the plant, and it contains both male and female parts. The stamen is the male part of the flower, and the pistil here is the female part of the flower. The stamen consists of this long structure over here, that's the filament, which is crowned over here, so to speak, by the anther. Now the anther is where the pollen grain is produced. This entire structure over here is the female part of the flower, and that's called the pistil. The pistil includes the very top part of it, which is the stigma, and this long tubular structure, which is called the style, and this entire thing over here, that's the ovary. And depending on which fruit we're talking about, the ovary may contain one or multiple hundreds of ovules, which are these tiny structures over here, each ovule containing one egg. As you know, once an egg is fertilized, it's no longer called an egg, it's called a zygote. Now the process of the pollen grain landing here on the stigma, that's called pollination. And then, as you recall, the pollen grain produces this long tubular structure called pollen tubes, which contain not one, but two sperm nuclei. They travel all the way over here, one of these sperms fertilizing the egg, and the other one, they fertilize the polar nuclei, creating a triploid nucleus. This process, as you recall, is called double fertilization. The fertilization of the egg, of course, results in the zygote, which develops into the embryo of the new plant, and fertilization of the polar nuclei gives rise to the endosperm, which nourishes the embryo until it is able to sustain itself. Thus, the seed contains the embryo, the endosperm, and the seed coat. Now, in understanding this process, the first thing that we shall do is we shall understand the development of the pollen grain. The second thing is we will understand the development of each ovule. Where do these polar nuclei come about from, for example? And the third thing that we shall study is fertilization. This unique phenomenon of double fertilization, one of the egg and the other of the polar nuclei. And finally, we shall finish by making some observations about the development of the seed, and then the entire ovary, which as we have suggested, develops into the fruit. Okay, the key to understanding the whole phenomenon is to have a very good knowledge of the anatomy of the flower. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw the pistil, or the female part of the flower, uh, which kind of looks like this. Now the key thing to understand here is to appreciate that this is not a solid structure. In other words, this is not like a big flask of solid material. Rather, starting here on the top, at the stigma, there's a tunnel. So if I could draw basically like a tunnel over here, starts like this, and goes down like this. In other words, this area is hollow structure. This is a hollow structure like this. So when the pollen grain is traveling down over here, it's not digging in, so to speak. It's going in a tunnel. And depending upon which flower you're talking about, the tunnel, when it gets over here, divides into several other smaller tunnels, like this. And each, then, if you can imagine, grows into like a, a very big room, or like a cave. So this part here is a hollow structure. And let's draw three of these out over here, like this. So the first thing, therefore, we must understand that the pistol here is not a solid structure. It has from all the way top over here, like a tunnel that leads into these caves over here. Now inside these big caves, so to speak, are things that kind of grow out from the side of the walls like this. These are the ovules. They're kind of like hanging from the wall of these caves like this. Of course, this is a cartoon representation. In real life, of course, they'll look different. But the idea to understand is that this area is hollow, and the ovules basically are outpouchings from here, from the wall of these caves. Okay, so let's label some of these parts. Right here, that's the stigma. This structure is the style. This entire thing over here is the ovary. And each of these individually are the ovules. And each ovule, as you recall, will contain an egg. So these are the female parts of a flower. Next, we shall study the development of the pollen grain. 
which occurs in the anther, as you recall. So if you were to draw the anther over here like this, the end of the filament, and if you were to open it up or peel the outside layers out, what you would see is long structures like this, kind of like bananas. Now these are called the microsporangia. And each microsporangia contains hundreds of these small tiny cells. Now these are diploid cells called the sporocytes. Now the sporocytes will undergo meiosis to create the pollen grain. So the first thing that happens is the sporocytes develop a thick layer around them like this. And then they undergo meiosis to create four haploid cells. They're still surrounded by this thick material over here called the callus. These four cells that you produce, you understand, are haploid because this is meiosis. Now at this stage, all of these cells have a haploid nucleus like this. Now what happens is each of these nuclei will divide into two. So each of these cells will contain two nuclei. In the microsporangia, the whole bunch of sporocytes which are diploid, they undergo meiosis to create four haploid cells. These are called microspores. As these microspores mature, each of those nuclei divide to give two nuclei in each of these cells. And each of these structures matures into a pollen grain. So when the pollen grains land over here in the stigma, each of them will contain two nuclei like this. And this process, pollen grain going from the anther over here to the stigma over here, this process of course is called pollination. And it's aided by wind, insects, etc. as you know. Now what lies ahead for this pollen grain is a long tunnel over here which lead into these cave type structures where the ovules are located. Okay, now we shall turn our attention to the ovules. Ovules, as you recall, are located inside the ovaries over here. They're kind of outgrowths of the walls of the ovaries like this. So if this is the wall of the ovary over here, this here is an example of an ovule. The ovule is a closed structure except for a tiny opening over here called the micropyle. It's very important because that's where the sperm is going to enter and then fertilize the egg. Now if you recall, the egg is inside over here. Now what we're going to do is follow a similar process like this, the development of the egg from diploid cells that occurs. Now if you take a cross section of the structure, you see again here's the micropyle and inside you'll see one cell, one cell with one nucleus and this is a diploid nucleus. This is the diploid sporocyte cell. Now this sporocyte cell, which is diploid, will undergo meiosis to create four haploid nuclei. Now meiosis is a process where four different nuclei are created, so these nuclei, they are not the same. In other words, when the sporocyte undergoes meiosis to create four haploid nuclei, they're all different, and only one survives. So this process is meiosis, and this creates four haploid nuclei. So again, the ovule contains a single cell initially called a sporocyte. The sporocyte is a diploid cell which undergoes meiosis to create four nuclei. And only one survives. All subsequent nuclei here will have the same genetic material. See, now what happens is the surviving nucleus over here divides three times to give eight nuclei. But still, there's only one cell over here like this. So it starts like this and then divides into two. And then each divides again, and each divides again to give a total of eight nuclei. But then these are all the same nuclei, and they're all haploid like this. So this surviving nucleus then divides three times to give a total of eight nuclei. And they're going to arrange themselves like this. They're going to be two in the middle like this, and they're going to be three over here, and three over here like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This cell over here, that's the egg. The ones in the center over here, these are the polar nuclei that we've seen before over here. In our diagram before, that was the egg, and those were the polar nuclei. See, now what's going to happen is that each of these individual nuclei will form a cell on their own by making cell walls around them, like this. So there's three cells over here, and there will be two over here. And of course, the egg over there, well, the two polar nuclei will kind of take up the remainder of the space, make one big cell like this. And this cell here, appropriately, is called the central cell with the two polar nuclei. And these cells over here, they're called the antipodal cell 
or the antipodal cells, the three of these. So technically, there are seven cells over here and eight nuclei because this one has two nuclei in it, right? So all of these cells have one nuclei and it's a haploid nucleus except for this central cell which has two nuclei. The entire structure here is called the female gametophyte, also known as the embryo sac. The female gametophyte or the embryo sac is now ready to receive the sperm so that fertilization can occur. And this entire structure over here that you see is right there. And the egg cell is going to be right there, right where the micropile or the single opening is to the structure. Okay, now back to the pollen grain right there. When the pollen lands in the stigma with the two nuclei that it has, it starts to grow a tube structure like this. So here's the pollen and the tube that it grows is called the pollen tube. And traveling along the pollen tube are the two cells. This one, which kind of directs the growth of the tube, is accurately called the tube cell. And following close behind is the generative cell, which is the sperm. Now here, there's only one sperm. But as the tube grows further down, this generative cell is going to divide into two, giving rise to two sperm cells. So as the pollen grows this pollen tube, the tube cells kind of directs the growth and right behind it is this generative cell. And somewhere along the line, this generative cell divides into two. Now both of these are haploid nuclei like this, right? So now what you have are two sperm cells over here, right behind that tube cell that's directing the growth. Now a little later you come, this tube is going to keep growing over here and it's going to go into one of these caves, so to speak, and then keep going, keep going, keep going like that. And eventually it's going to find this opening over here at the micropile. So now when they reach the female gametophyte, the embryo sac over here, see the tube cell is going to degenerate. And these sperm cells, one of them, is going to go to this micropile and with the help of the synergy cell, it's going to fertilize the egg over here. So the first sperm over here will fertilize the egg. The second sperm will travel over here and then fertilize the two polar nuclei. All these three nuclei will fuse to give a triploid nucleus. Whereas the sperm fuses with the egg, this will give rise to a diploid zygote. Now you must understand, this process will occur for as many times as there are a number of ovules. If there are like 20 ovules, there will be 20 pollens over here, each of them making their own pollen tube over here like this. Now it's quite a remarkable phenomenon if you think about it. That little tiny pollen making all this pollen tube. Well, the style over here actually nourishes these pollen tubes so that they can grow. Once all of the ovules are fertilized like this, this structure then will grow into a seed. When all the seeds are formed, the ovary itself will mature to give rise to the fruit. So this triploid nucleus over here, this is the endosperm nuclei. And this here will be the zygote. The synergy cells and the antipodal cells, they disintegrate and this structure over here will give rise to the seed. The outside over here will harden and develop into the seed coat. The endosperm nuclei will divide many, many times to, to give rise to a whole bunch of cells inside over here, that that will be the endosperm. The zygote, of course, divides multiple times to give rise to the embryo. And this is now a seed ready to germinate. When all such seeds are formed like this, when all the eggs have been fertilized and the seeds have developed, the accessory structures of the flowers, such as the petal, the stamen, etc., they fall off and the ovary matures into the fruit. And in some ways you can see this is a reasonably complicated process, but it also at the same time is quite beautiful in some ways. The anther, if you recall, contains the microsporangia with the sporocytes which are diploid. The eusporocytes give rise to microspores, which are haploid. Each of them then develop into the pollen grain. The pollen grain contains two nuclei, the tube cell nucleus and the generative cell nucleus, which as the pollen tube grows on its way to find the ovule, the generative cell divides into two, giving rise to two sperms. On this side over here, we looked at the development of the female gametophyte, the embryo sac, which starts out also as a diploid cell, the sporocyte. The sporocyte and gosmiosis giving rise to four nuclei, three of them die. And the remaining nuclei divide and they arrange themselves in a pattern like this, three, two, and three. 
and this structure further matures, giving rise to the egg cell, the two synergid cells on each side of the egg cell, the central cells with the two polar nuclei, and the three antipodal cells. The function of the antipodal cell is not as central to the fertilization process as is the central nuclei and the synergid cells. Nevertheless, once the double fertilization occurs, this gives rise to the diploid zygote and also a triploid endosperm nuclei. Here's a diploid zygote and the triploid endosperm nuclei. And the endosperm will be the nutrient supply for the embryo. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, as-salatu wa rasulillah, walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum.